कब स्टार्ट करते हैं यस सो सुमित वुड यू लाइक टू गो अबाउट इट या शोर ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक्स टू एवरीवन वन हैव मेक इट फॉर टुडे आई नो इट्स फ्राइड सैटरडे इन द मॉर्निंग बट या आई होप इट विल द फैशन विल बी वॉच इट and uh, for today we have a speaker uh, deepak kanuri and uh, supriya pawar who are going to walk us through for the api governance so we'll just get started uh can you move to the next slide so these are just some self harbor statement that we do in our every meetup like both the speaker and host and organizer is meet up in individual capacity only and uh, deepak can you go to the previous slide yeah and this presentation is uh, strictly for learning purposes only and the organizer and pres presenter do not hold any responsibility that the substance be worked out so far man so anyway we are going to uh, upload all the details and uh, recording along with the video recording on the event page and if, in case of any queries we can reach out to uh, the speakers or the leaders okay uh, can you go to the next page please thank you and uh, these are some housekeeping activities that we keep uh, the recording of this meetup as i said earlier will be uploaded on the event page within 24 hours kind of a wrap up activity that we do along with the presentation and the questions can be submitted or asked at any time in the chat so we will uh, we will take the questions uh, um, in in, uh, in some pauses okay between the session and uh, and we will try to make it more interactive as possible and in the end more important which is feedback so you help us guys to help you in the upcoming meetups and sessions so there will be a feedback form which will get published uh, at the end of the session and i mean you will receive an email so we just request you to fill the feedback form and just uh, give us the feedbacks uh, honestly so we will help you in the next upcoming sessions okay uh, so with that i think uh, i'll hand over to uh, sandeep uh, for the introduction so after the board Hello, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this twelfth uh, edition of uh, the Chennai uh, Meetup. Meet up. So, myself Sandeep Krishnan. So, I'm a technical uh, instructor for uh, working for Microsoft, as well as I work for the organization at JC Labs. So, yeah, that's so that's all about me. So, I have uh, can see that almost eleven plus years of integration experience I've got. So, yeah. So, so welcome yeah, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Sunil. Uh, so myself, Sunil Dauja, I have a total seven years of experience now. Uh, so this slide needs to be updated um, in integration and API technologies, and I work in Wipro as an integration architect. Uh, yeah, what do you, Sunil? Yeah, thank you uh, so much, Sunil. Uh, myself, Supriya. uh eight years of experience in integration and api technologies uh, i have completed architect and uh, developer certified recently like delivery champion also i have completed and uh, i'm very much active on linkedin so uh, people who are new to me or soft and etc do reach out to me for any uh, help you, re you require next sanadeepak uh, yeah speakers <coughs> Okay, so I won't introduce myself again, but yeah, I'm a speaker also uh, for this. And uh, thanks to Deepak, I think he encouraged to select this topic, and then I found it really interesting. Uh, so credit goes to him. But yeah, he'll introduce himself. Yep. Thank you, really. I mean, uh, thank you for the opportunity as well for all the speakers here. So uh, myself, I mean, I um, I am Deepak Talwari. I mean, I'm acting as a technical team lead at Accenture, and I'm. having almost 7 plus years of overall experience in the it industry and i am a certified developer and architect integration architect and platform architect as well so this is my very short you know short introduction so uh, today i'll be just you know uh, going through the agenda for today uh, so the topic today that we are going to discuss is about the api governance uh, so this is the following agenda so i'll be speaking about exactly what is api governance and why do we need api governance and uh, what new you know uh, what new uh, you know uh, screens that we have got with api governance on any point platform and i'll be giving a short overview on what are you know profiles the rule sets the api conformance and how do we need to identify certain apis that we need to govern and i'm going to speak about the adding the tags the asset tags that we publish the apis that we publish on to exchange and the categories as well 
and moving forward there will be a most important one the governance key facts ap governance key facts that would include um, these rule sets profiles the conformance and the notifications that we send out if certain you know apas are not uh, abiding to the governance rules and uh, finally we'll be having a small demo where we'll be covering on how to create the governance profiles we would be also covering how to use the default rule sets provided by mulesoft also uh, we would be showcasing some you know uh, custom rule sets that we can apply on uh, our rest apis and also we'll be speaking more about the dashboards how does that api governance dashboard look like and uh, how to download the reports of the apis that you are governing from the portal and also we'll be speaking about the notifications as well like how will a user get notified with uh, their api governance uh, uh, you know the result of the api governance on their apis and also the last and final one would be benefits we'll be talking about the highs and lows of the api governance as well so this is the overall agenda for today uh, so i will just start off with uh, what is api governance so the first important thing is uh, like uh, before we go to what is api governance we need to understand what is the problem statement actually okay so what is the exact problem that you are facing in the real time it industry right now and that why what is the specific reason that api governance came into picture okay so take an example that if you are working for any client so what exactly happens is that you will be you know uh, you will be starting developing or scaling your apis from like one api to api and you will be just going on creating your apis against your organization okay so in your business organization at a particular point of time you will be having a huge number of apis so it becomes very difficult for you or for anyone who is rather developing those apis to govern those apis in the sense like uh, take an example that you are developing the api from this st very start point from the design center and now you want to uh, push the developers who are working on those apis to follow the security or to follow the api best practices so from the start from the point where you are starting to develop these apis till you complete the whole life cycle of your api so you need to govern those apis or you need to set certain rules on those apis that you will follow in terms of the best practices in terms of the security and the guidelines as well so in to support that to support the whole life cycle of these apis uh, in order to govern those apis we are uh, mulesoft has provided us this governance portal that we can use to apply some common rules okay some common rules or some guardrails that is related to the api guidelines api security and the api best practices that you can apply to your apis right from the start of the development of your apis right from the design center okay so the goal of this api governance is actually to ensure that you st standardize your apis against the pre set of guidelines that are already provided with respect to like uh, you can see on the screen like it's o ovasp api security top 10 uh, you know rules that we have that we need to follow and there are some open api specifications as well the rule sets that we need to follow if you are developing some open apis okay so that means you can try to apply these particular uh, rule sets directly start from where you are starting your APIs in the sense like you will be starting your APIs to design them from the design center. So you can use these uh, particular governance rule sets right from the start of your API. Okay, so this is the major use of the API governance. So moving forward, I just wanted to mention about uh, what new that we have got this portal, like how API platform. So any setting, but it's just a small component of any point platform that would you know directly enable you to put some governance rules, existing governance rules or your custom governance rules to your APIs as part of the whole API lifecycle. Okay. So this governance actually would help to improve the API quality that you are trying to develop for your own organization. That means how how will it do that actually? So it will you will be able to identify the conformance issues in the sense like you'll be trying to identify the problems with your api right from the development of your api from the design center okay and also take an example that you have some custom rule sets that you want to provide for your organization that everyone should need to use in your own organization so in that case what you can do you can create a rule set custom rule set and you can upload that to any point exchange in for your own organization and you can share that with your own developers so that they can import that into their own APIs that they develop in the design center. That means uh, from the exchange. So that means you can share your governance best practices. You can share those custom rule sets across your organization. And the second advantage of API governance is that you can apply these rules right from the design time. In the sense like you are trying to you know, uh, 
develop or uh, you know design your api right from the designer okay so you can import these particular rule sets as an exchange dependencies into your api in the design center and you can apply those rules at the design time as well design time only that means you're trying to uh, you know go govern your apis or you're trying to apply these best practices right from the design time so that would really help uh, rather than having this you know uh, complete uh, you know review cycles on your own project so if you directly apply these rules at this very start point of time that would be very easy for a developer to apply these best practices the next most important thing is about the cicd pipeline so you can also apply these standards to this api contract okay within your cicd pipeline as well we are going to speak about all these best practices going forward in the demo on how can we do uh, how can we perform the uh, how can we use the existing rule sets or create any custom rule sets so moving forward um, we need to first understand before you know uh, till now we have gone through what is api governance but there are some concepts that we need to first understand before we exactly move or before we work on those apis okay so the first one will be about the governance profiles so profile is nothing but uh, take an example that your business organization has around 10 apis so you want to manage those 10 apis you want to govern those 10 apis so to govern those existing apis in your organization first of all you need to create these governance profiles so these governance profiles is nothing but it's a chosen governance rule sets against a group of apis okay and these apis that you are trying to govern they can be validated against those rule sets that you define in your governance profile okay so that means a one single governance profile will be having uh, multiple statuses like in the take an example that you are governing 10 apis under the governance profile now out of those 10 apis take an example seven apis that is 70 percent of your apis are conformant that means your governance profile is at normal state normal status say so take an example out of those 10 apis you are you are having nine apis which are not conformant that means they are not you know uh, getting validated against the existing rule sets they have some problems within them that means your total governance profile is at risk actually because the 70 percent of your apis which are actually you are trying to govern using the governance profile are not conformant okay so that means overall governance profile is nothing but you are trying to govern a particular set of apis using the existing rule sets or some custom rule sets that you apply on group of apis so that means that is the governance profile so moving forward we need to understand about the rule sets as well we are speaking more about rule sets here so rule sets are nothing but um, take an example that you have written certain amount of rules or certain amount of guidelines that you want to apply on a rest api take an example that you have a rest api and uh, you want to apply certain rules on it so you can combine all those rules into one single yaml file and you can upload that into your anypoint exchange as a rule set so that means it's a collection of rules that you want to apply them on a rest api so this can be done by pushing that as a custom rule set or you can use the existing rule sets that are available that are available in any point exchange okay so few examples are nothing but uh, like uh, the internal and external best practice guidelines like you have some as i have told you already the um uh, async api best practices okay then you have any point best practices there are a few industry specific government standards which are you know given by mules of itself okay they are uploaded as an default rule sets actually okay you can use those default rule sets or create your own custom rule sets for your organization okay so now moving back we are talking again here about the conformance first of all what do you mean by conformance right take an example that you want to govern like your set of apis take an example one api you are trying to uh, you know test that api across uh, certain rule sets okay now if an api definition what you try to do is you can you can you know um, you, your api will run against the existing api definitions okay so that means how many api definitions you are trying to let's take an example that you have uh, six uh, rule sets you have applied all the six rule sets over your api now how many rule sets is that passing actually take an example it is passing only five rule sets okay so that means your api conformance is nothing but it's a status actually okay that your api is uh, abiding to how many rule sets that you have applied okay that is that is meant as api conformance now the most important thing is the api conformance will only be applied to those api definitions that are published to exchange as a rest apis 
Okay, take an example, you designed an API in Design Center and you need to publish it as a REST API to govern that API actually. Okay, so that's where your API conformance gets applied to that. Now, going back to the non-conformance non severity. This is nothing but, uh, as I already told you, uh, that a certain number of rule sets are set against your API to govern your APIs. Out of them, take an example that you have only uh, two rule sets which are passing. Okay, so that means if 0 to 40% of rule sets which are passing on a particular API, that means your API is at high severity. Because whatever the rule sets you have applied, they are not passing again. They are not governing your APIs exactly. They are not passing actually, okay. So that means the number of, it, it depends on number of rule sets that your conformance status on your, API, on your API will be varying actually. Okay, that means high severity. 0 to 40% of rule sets are passing. It's known as high severity on your particular API, okay. I mean, medium severity is just about 41 to 80 percent of rule sets which are applying then you call your you know profile is at medium severity and same with the low severity that you almost you know all the rule sets are not passing on your api that you you know put it across that you want to govern on your api so that means your profile is at pretty low severity okay so these are the most important concepts which we need to understand before we you know try to govern any api in the governance portal okay So uh, the most important screenshots are present here, actually. If you see the first screenshot, uh, that is nothing but uh, um, like if you open the AnyPoint platform, you'll be seeing a new, you know, new tab here known as API governance, where you can just go into that and uh, you can go ahead and uh, you'll be seeing some screen known as creating profile. So that means you'll be trying to create profiles first and then you'll be going ahead later. This will be shown in the demo, but uh, how to create the governance profile and everything, this is the screenshot. Okay, and I already told you about the existing rule sets or which are provided by MuleSoft. You can, there are around nine different rule sets which are provided by MuleSoft already. We can leverage the existing rule sets, but otherwise create any custom rule sets as well. Now, this one is the most important screenshot which we need to discuss about. Like if you see, uh, as soon as you create any governance profile, so this is the screenshot that you look at. So if you see, like uh, there are three different profiles that we have used three different rule sets that we have used against the governance profile. Okay. You see here uh, the number of profiles that we have, we have how many total of total, how many APIs that we are trying to govern, how many of them are conformant in the sense, how many of them are passing all the rule sets. Okay. And the, if the non-conformant APIs are how many, and uh, what is the severity of those non-conformant APIs? Because they're not abiding to the rule sets that you have, uh, you know, uh, put against your APIs. So how many of them are with high severity, medium severity and low severity? So this total screenshot, we will try to, you know, understand in the demo as well. Okay. Like so you have at point number three and point number four, like how can you export this particular governance status as a report? How can you create a new profile? Okay. So this is the most uh, important, you know, screenshot that we need to understand going forward in the demo as well. Okay. So I'll just hand it over to, you know, my post speaker Supriya right now. She will, you know, take us through with the uh, existing governance key facts. Uh, you, so thanks, uh, Deepak. Uh, well explained. And uh, as Deepak said, a um, few of the things we in the key facts, which we'll uh, speak about, and then we'll move towards a demo. I will encourage that uh, the time I, have, I start the demo, even you guys can start it. I mean, what do we need is one API design and then uh, one trial access. So we can kind of create a profile. You guys can together create it with me. And, uh, you know, so that way, if ever, whoever is interested uh, can complete that with me and just let me know if you're going to do that. Okay. Meanwhile, I'll just try to cover the API governance key facts. Uh, so number one is about rule sets. So as Deepak has already mentioned, this is a collection of rules. And, uh, you know, once uh, nine rules are given default by MuleSoft, MuleSoft in future might add it. Those rule sets we can download from Exchange. And also we can create our custom rules and upload that dependent, depends on the organization's requirements. So uh, in the rule, as he mentioned, external, internal uh, practice guides and naming convention, industry specification standards and everything will be present there. As I mentioned, custom rule sets can be also created uh, using t uh, two types, like we can download the uh, rule set, 
change in something in that and then call it as a custom rule set but we are using the mule soft rule only but changing something and calling it as a custom now the another option could be we start writing yaml file completely different and then try to post it so those are the two types of doing about profiles multiple profiles can be created now just imagine uh, that uh, one profile we are targeting wherein we are targeting uh, to include the apis which are with respect to orders that now there is another kind of profile wherein we are targeting the apis which are with respect to customers so that is something we can tackle using a tags in the exchange so that i will cover up as part of demo uh deepak hello uh, sumit could you please off. check if it, it dropped off seems like he's dropped off uh, i think he, will, he might be trying maybe, to reach maybe. Yeah, let's wait for a second yeah i'm uh, i'm i've started sharing my screen is it visible yes, yeah please. it is please go on. thank you so yes, uh, then I was talking about the profiles. Uh, Asumit, let me know once he joins, okay? If an API definition is included, multiple governance profile, it must pass. Okay, now imagine one API is there and the profile which we are tagging are two profiles. For example, there is one API which falls under both the categories, okay? So in that case, the profile number one get passed as part of that API. And profile number two rule sets should also get passed as uh, part of that uh, API. Confirmance, the API definitions are validated against the governance rule set. Confirmance is calculated, meaning something which looks like a report. APIs with greater than 70% confirmance is treated as normal. If it is lesser than that, that APIs will be at risk. The confirmance applies to the API definitions that are publish, published in exchange. Until and unless we don't publish it on exchange, no matter if you have it in a design center, it is not going to work. So I'll try to show you such a scenarios during uh, the demo presentation. APIs are validated if they're identified by the selection criteria of at least one of the governance profile. A API confirmance indicates whether a validated API definition passes all the required rule or one or more governance rule set. So there will be an API given. We'll have a, a scroll bar. So in that, we click on that API and we check if it is passed for everything or if it is not. Then let's talk about notification. The API owner, like whoever has published the API, will get the notification about confirmance of the API. Second, confirmance report with violation can be emailed to the stakeholders while creating uh, the profile. We have such options. The same report can be exported as Excel. So this is also we are going to cover as part of a demo. Uh, we'll make a start to demo. Uh, he has rejoined, Supriya. So if you want, you can just. Uh, okay, great. Uh, no, uh, it's, it's my part, actually. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, uh, so I hope the screen is still visible. Uh, this is a AnyPoint platform trial access. This is Deepak's uh, trial access. So as he told you in a screenshot, API governance is a new, um, uh, I think, product. It is something launched by MuleSoft. So whenever you create a trial access, you will be able to see it here. If you don't able to see it here, probably your organization has not bought that or something, or maybe it is not part of that uh, uh, accesses. So I'll click on API governance. Anybody who is doing with me can let me know and in between can ask the questions. If not, I'll still continue. So the first part of demo is creating a profile. So here, when this profile is already created, if the profile is not already created, you will see empty screen. New profile. Name something to the profile, OK? So maybe let me name it to governance rule sets. Let's see. What is the purpose of this? API should pass the rule sets provided as part of API governance by organization let's say abc okay this is my uh, purpose 
so this is important when a business uh, person looks into this next so here as i told you and deepak also mentioned there are nine rule sets which is already a part of uh, you know mule sort one any bond best practices best practices or sync api best practices https enforcement data graph authentication security open api best practices so you will see here 30 best practices for apis uh, i think deepak this is created by us yes right? Yes, yeah. yes. So, so I think one the, that is the custom rule set that we have, you know, uh, used the existing rule set and we have yes. modified the rule so set. So the eight, we have eight rule sets are given by MuleSoft. Any of the rule set, if you want to see, what you can do is you can open it in the new tab. I am explaining one by one the profile parameters, and then uh, we'll check the demo also. So this any point best practices you can read it rule set with over thirty best practices for API. okay so the violations are given resource uses a lower case suppose we are using a resource customer everything is a lower case then this will catch as a violation now it, 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 each one has a different intensity this is something which is a warnings okay so some are warning some are... so if you want to check each rules definition what we can do is we can kind of download it this is something i'm talking about one rule set if you want to check it for async best practices you can check it https data graph everything so here let me open that so the moment we open that there are two pages one is exchange json file rule set so i'll open this let me take it in notepad plus plus that will be more visible yes so as um, hello i'm audible i hope i'm audible oh sorry yes. this is bad this is good this is bad yeah okay fine so uh, this is how it looks like validation profile and then profile name is any point best practices the violation is resource use lower case so let's see what does it catch as part of that violation yeah oh one just point to add uh, superior yes. here actually to everyone yes. Uh, yeah. So th this particular validation profiles what you are seeing are actually mm -hmm. uploaded as the asset type that you have uploaded as a rule set. Okay, if you go right. to Exchange, right. you have multiple asset types. Yes. So what yes. MuleSoft has done is they have the uh, the ex is Deepak's voice breaking for me or for everybody? I think we lost him, uh, Deepak. Okay, okay, fine. So as uh, no, I'll continue. Resource you uh, here. What it is? It checks use lower case example account. So that's the same example I gave it to you. So just wanted to show you how the rule set file looks like. Uh, Sumit, I'm audible, right? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. Uh, so as I told you, you can download any one of it and then check the rule sets. so as part of my profile i'm going to select any point best practices let me also select https enforcement next okay now as you can see here is api type tags and categories for that i need to open a design center also would like to show how many apis we have created so here is a design center in the design center we have rest api sales api 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 governance test api order api this is something we have created also i would like to check it in exchange just to show you if the tags are given or not so this is the my applications so one application at a time will open and will check if there are tags so sales api has got a tag which is called as sales now there is any point best practice custom there is no tag because this is something created as a custom api governance has a tag which is security and then there is order api which has no tags so purposely we want to show you various scenarios so order api doesn't have any tag sales api had a ta tag which is sales and then there is a um, api api governance test api that has a tag as security okay so here if i go i select rest api all are rest api in the design center so uh, all the rest apis will get apply 
now here comes the tags what if if i don't select any tag neither sales nor security if i don't select anything all will show up api governance also order also and sales also what if if i select a sales then only sales api will come okay i hope it is clear okay so right now what i'm going to do is i'm keeping it default i'm not adding anything so that all my three apis will show up okay all the three apis now i do next now here the page wherein i decide that what where all my uh, notification should go so api publisher as i told you this is so he is anyway going to get the notification okay i'll just add others and my id so deepak is going to receive it anyway whatever is his email id setting in the uh, it is set in his profile so it is anyway going to be there so this is the only page wherein uh, we give the notification so we saw, saw general information rule set filter criteria and notification now i have to create okay so i have created the profile okay files are there yesterday i created one today i have created one now what happens if i try to create api which is new let's say let me just kind of copy okay so here what if if somebody tries to create a complete new rest api i'm just want to i just want to show you that any new api gets created can fall under api governance profile or not that is what i want to show you oh there are what are these things one moment maybe let's keep it very very simple okay we kept it simple let me call, let me say publish so this is called as rest to api as i mentioned until and unless you don't publish this it won't be a part of api confirmance reports so i can add the, any tag to the it will get confirm it will get added as part of my profile yes even if i don't assign any tag it will get added as part of my uh, profile so in the exchange it is there so right now you see it looks like not validated let's just check so here i kind of refresh as you can see this is two profiles this is what one profile has been created total apis is 3 now you can see the total apis are four okay because i have added one profile explicitly now this four apis are not confirmed now we have to see this section which is api okay now in that api you can see all these four apis are not confirmed some is medium security api governance test api has the valid seals hence it is not high severity it is medium severity because it is uh, not uh, less than 70% confirmed with respect to uh, the rule sets so if i select any one of it you can see 12 violation one violation with respect to https enforcement let's just see the, which is the medium severity six violations but http enforcement is passed when it is show, hence it is showing up as a medium severity okay as i told you if we give any tag still it is going to be there now let's go to the exchange just to check if it is validated or not see this 
not confirmed this is https enforcement validated now the latest one which we created that was rest to api let's just see see this not confirmed earlier when we created rest to api what was what was there it was not validated till that point but the moment i added it and created a profile now it has got validated okay i think that's it uh, from the rule sets point of view i think uh, deepak you take it over if deepak something is there which i have missed down please uh, call call that out thank you yeah i think you have yeah you have covered uh, a bit well so if we just move back uh, let me share my screen quickly So as uh, you know, as uh, Supriya already you know walked us through uh, on the existing rule sets that we have. So now majorly I'm going to speak about the custom rule sets. So how can we uh, how can we leverage the custom rule sets against to, to govern your APIs? Okay. So there are two ways to do that. Uh, you can create your own custom profile. Uh, like the rule set is nothing but it's a YAML file. What you know Supriya has shown us earlier. So that is nothing but it's a um, it's a normal YAML file where you can you know write down your rules actually, which would actually scan your uh, which will uh, scan your API. Okay. So now here the most important thing is that uh, <clears throat> what are these custom rule sets and how can we create them? As I spoke about you, two ways of doing it. The first way is nothing but uh, download the existing rule sets. Okay, that we have on the portal. Take an example that uh, for existing rule set. We'll move to exchange. As I already told you, we have all the rule sets, the existing rule sets that are given to us by MuleSoft. So where you have to go to provided by MuleSoft and go to rule sets. So you can see these existing rule sets. Okay. These are the ones which are provided by MuleSoft currently. And we have an option here. Let's take an example. Like as a developer, I want certain rule sets to be recognized by recognized as a standard rule sets. And I want them to be uploaded, uh, uploaded by MuleSoft. So what you can do is you can just submit that idea in an idea portal from MuleSoft, and MuleSoft will just you know uh, uh, take that into picture, and uh, they would you know uh, try to authorize it as an uh, you know as a rule set that can be used by uh, across the organizations. Okay, or otherwise you can develop your own custom rule sets against your organization. So the two ways are you can download the existing rule sets. Take an example that I'm going to any point best practices. Okay. And I'm clicking on download. This will download me a zip file of two files. So one is the YAML file, which is a rule set, which I've already shown you before. Uh, take an example. So if I just download that version of the rule set. So this particular one, which you see here is the total YAML file. This is an existing rule set that we have. Now what we are going to do is the first way is to just download this existing rule set from exchange and you can modify this one. Okay. You can modify, like you can add your new rule to it, whatever you need to add in your organization, or you can change the violation or warning. So what we have spoken earlier is that violation is nothing, but it's a high severity errors. Warning is nothing, but it's just a warning that would, you know, uh, you know, shown as warning on the portal on the governance portal. Okay, so you can make any changes to this existing rule set and re-upload this existing rule set directly from the organization. Okay, so take an example that uh, if I just move back to assets list, we can publish a new asset here. Okay, and while you're publishing, just publish it as a new rule set. Okay, so now what are we going to do here right now is um, we already have this any point platform best practices uh, custom policy that we have already created, the custom rule set that we have created. So let's do one uh, small change here. Okay. Let us delete this existing rule set that we have. Okay. And we are going to create a custom rule set again. Okay. We're going to create a custom rule set from the existing rule set itself. Okay. So moving back. So if you see this current rule set, take an example that uh, this particular rule resource uses lowercase. So what does this mean exactly? So th that means that whenever we are creating, uh, whenever we are creating any endpoint, okay, in the RAML, any resource that we are creating in the RAML, 
that resource should be having all the lower cases itself. Let's take an example that you have one, one single word, you have to use complete lower case. And if you are using, you are having two words, okay, in the resource names. So it has to be complete lower case or it has to be kebab case. Okay, that should be, you know, separated by the hyphen. So this is the rule that we are trying to leverage here. So if we apply this rule against your API, that means your API should abide to this particular rule itself. It should be completely in lower case or it should be in the kebab case. Okay, so this resource use lower case it, in the default rule set, it is being treated as a violation. That means it's a high security error. Okay, now let us do one small thing here. Let us go back to the existing APIs that we are trying to govern already. So we'll be going to the governance profile. Okay, so before we go to governance profile, let us just also look at the design center as well. So how did we develop our existing API? Okay. So currently, if you see, there are two custom policies which I have already created. So let me do something like this. Let me delete the existing governance profile. We are going to do it from the scratch. Okay. So I, now what I want to do here is this API governance test API. Let me open this in an exchange. So we will try to apply this custom rule set over an existing API. So before that, we need to understand which API you need to govern actually, okay? So I have a single API here known as API governance test API. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, so there is already an existing endpoint that is already not abiding to my rule. It has, my rule here is, you have already seen here, it should be in the lower case actually, okay? My endpoint should be in the lower case, but here my endpoint is actually in the camel case, okay? So what should this do is, it should identify this particular error as a violation, okay? Because the existing rule set is actually treating this as a violation, okay? So now what I'm, what I'm gonna do, this is already published over to exchange as an asset, as a REST API, okay? So if I go back, um, to the governance console. Let me do one thing. Let me create a new profile right now. Okay. Like, uh, we're testing the custom rule set here. Okay. Just put it as test governance profile. Okay. So, as I already told you, what are we going to apply? We are going to apply the existing rule set itself. Okay. Just scroll to the top, any point best practices. We are gonna use the existing one. I didn't modify it yet. I'm using the existing one itself, okay? So if you see, our API governance test API is actually having the tag security. So that means what, I, what I'll try to do, I'll try to filter out the APIs which are having the security tag, okay? That means you are using these tags to filter out, to govern only specific set of APIs. So you don't want to govern all the APIs sometimes. So you have a requirement to govern only specific set of APIs with a particular tag. So that's where this tag and categories are used to govern only specific set of APIs in your uh, organization. Okay. So now once this is selected, uh, one second. refresh this so also there is a subscription limit as you see uh, on the test profiles you can only govern five set of apis if you want to govern more set of apis you have to uh, go for the higher subscription so what i'm trying to do is use the existing uh, any point best practices so let me do one thing let me click on security so, so, let's take 
So you have to select the API type and then the security. So you are having your API governance test API that you want to govern. Then moving back as I, as Supriya already talked about. So currently I am the API publisher who is publishing it to an exchange. So I would by default get you know the API notifications if I click this checkbox. And uh, you also know that while you're creating an API in exchange, you can also give API contacts to whom uh, you need to send out the notifications if there are any version updates over the top of your assets, okay? So you can use that. And others, I think, uh, like, you know, uh, take an example that uh, can you can use actually, if you want, any other emails that where you want to send your notification across. So right now, what I'll try to do, I am the API publisher. By default, I would get it, actually. But let me again move back what are we trying to do we're trying to govern one set, specific set of with the existing rule sets that we have so as soon as i do that so i, I see that my profile is at risk because i'm trying to govern one api which is not confirmed severity so what does this mean high severity means that means there are many rule sets uh, almost 90 percent of the rule sets 90 percent of the rules in my rule set are not being confirmed here okay confirmed by my api okay so if i click on this the most important thing you need to see is about the number of violations here so if you see the violation is about the naming conventions that the existing rule set where we have the existing rule that my uh you know my resource that i'm using in the raml should contain the lower cases but i have kept it as a camel case which is being treated as a violation because that is the existing rule set that we have now what are we going to do we are going to apply a custom rule set on this existing api okay so that custom rule set what we what we are going to do is change this violation okay we can do we, you can add new rules as well you can add new rules to the existing rule set or otherwise you can modify them in the existing rule set also so what i'm trying to do let me uh, remove this violation uh, remove this rule from the violation. try to do i'll try to uh, you know uh, put it as a warning okay what I have done, I have changed the uh, severity of the rule here actually, okay? That means I'm just modifying the existing rule set. It's one of the uh, case that we are trying to do. Otherwise, you can add the new rules as well, okay? So let me save it. Uh, before you upload this one, you have to change the version of this rule set, okay? So currently, we are having 1.0.1 rule set, okay? So what we're going to do is, uh, oh, we have already deleted the 1.0.1 .1 rule set. So let me zip it across. Uh, yes. So let me zip my existing modified rule set. Okay. The custom rule set. As I already told you, where do you need to publish them? You need to publish them under exchange. Okay. So publish new asset. I'm publishing a custom rule set right now. Okay. So that is any point best practices it's a custom one okay and i told you asset type what it is it's a rule set so you have to choose the specific zip file you can choose a zip file you can see here you can choose zip file or an yaml file so i have two options to do it what i'll try to do i'll try to go here i'll try to click on rule set i will try to upload this new rule set that i have created okay so i'm ready to consume that rule set so it's a stable life cycle so as soon as I upload this, this will be uploaded as a custom rule set, okay? So we'll wait till this asset gets published to any point exchange so that we can reuse it again, okay? So if you see on my screen, it is uploaded as a rule set. Where it is uploaded? It is uploaded in my business organization, okay? So now what are we going to do? We are going to govern the same API, okay? using the custom rule set also and we'll see the difference actually okay our main aim is what the violation that we defined earlier should be moved from the violation to a warning right now because we we modify the rule set from violation to warning okay the same rule will be copied over from violation to warning actually so what what we do we'll try to exist uh, we'll try to use the existing profile itself okay in the existing profile what i'm going to do i'm going to apply a new rule set you can see here the rule set any point best practices custom so it is in which organization in your own business organization these are all existing rule sets which are published by mules just click on this uh, 
new rule set you can apply both of them uh, i'm applying currently any point custom uh, rule set as well and the apply the existing rule set as well okay just click on it you are going to govern the same api there is no change so we add my email as well i'm going to showcase you how the email notification looks like as well going forward see that means i'm governing in my profile i'm using the two rule sets in my rule set i'm having one api which uh, which which i wanted to govern using the tags and i'm just clicking the update profile as soon as i do that if you go to your profile and see how many rule sets are there it's two rule sets the other rule set is still pending so what we'll try to do we'll try to refresh your page and we'll wait till our uh, API gets scanned actually. Yes, you see here now what happened. The difference you see this in the existing rule set, we have a rule on the naming uh, naming convention for the resources, which is as a violation. Now what I have done, I have changed it from violation to a warning. You see now that particular naming convention has moved to a warning. That means you can download the existing rule set from Exchange and then modify that YAML. You can create new rules in the existing YAML itself, existing YAML file, upload them in as a custom rule set in your own organization, and you can apply that across to govern your own APIs in your organization. Okay, so this is one type of using the uh, custom rule set, and you can have also second option instead of manually pushing them, uh, instead of manually you know uh, publishing them to Exchange, you can also use any point CLI, the command line interface. Okay. And you can run the scripts against that one and you can upload uh, this file using that any point CLI. Okay, take an example that you are using your CICD profile. So in that case, you want to automate the process of publishing these new assets, okay? So in that case, what you can do, you can leverage any point CLI command, the command line interface, and you can upload these uh, uh, assets automatically to Exchange. Okay, but the main goal here is we have to upload them as an assets, as a rule set to Exchange and you can leverage that across your organization. Okay, now the most important thing which I want to speak about is a notification. So we already know that we are running uh, our API, the governed API against two rule sets. One is the existing rule set, default rule set, and the other one is custom rule set. But you remember while we are already uh, setting this, uh, creating this profile, we already put some uh, emails under the notification here, okay, for the notification. So let me do one thing. Uh, let me open my own uh, email ID where I'll be already getting some notifications. Okay, so we'll just wait for a couple of minutes. Yes, so you already got some governance API, you know, uh, summary. Summary, you see here. So this is the subject of the email that we have received, the notification that we have received from any point platform. It says the governance API alert summary. And you see, it will also mention about which API that you are trying to govern and which rule set that it has failed. Okay, which API, which rule set that has failed. Okay, now you can either go to view code. View code is nothing but you are going to view your own API under the exchange. Okay, you click it, you will, it will just divert you to, to exchange to look at your own API, what is failing. And the other most important thing is about open in exchange, which will open the same API in exchange as well, where you can see and understand, as earlier Supriya already mentioned that uh, the API is conformant or not conformant against which rule sets that you have. Okay, you see here in exchange also it would show like uh, for how many rule sets, which version of rule set that you are trying to use, what are the violations and everything. You can see them on the assets page on, on exchange as well. Okay, so this is how it, uh, your notification looks like when you uh, when a certain you know API fails to you know uh, get governed using the existing or the custom rule sets. Okay. And one more important thing which I wanted to mention is about uh, the versions of this, uh, you know, the versions of these uh, rule sets. Okay. So you can upload multiple versions of existing rule set and you can govern accordingly. Okay. You can govern your APS accordingly. Mm, yeah. And one last important thing is about, I already told you, one important advantage of this API governance is that you can. Uh, easily govern your API at the design time from the exchange itself, right? So if you see this particular API, right now I told you we are using this uh, 
kebab case right so what i'm going to try to do here is you can add the existing rule set okay as a dependency okay take an example if you see oh, these are provided by mule soft the existing one this is the custom one which we have already applied take an example like i'm going to apply uh this time let us apply the stupid base informant yeah required examples okay so if i click required examples i'm trying to add an existing rule set as a dependency okay so what will this do this will help you to detect these violations now only actually okay in the space of project errors you'll try to find out the existing ones okay existing issues or errors here automatically so now take an example that you have downloaded it as an exchange module let me open that rule set first okay see what rule set does it have it says that we have to provide examples on payloads and parameters okay so let me do one thing go back and uh, example is there so let me remove this example from my resource okay so currently there are no errors here but what i'm going to do i'm going to violate the existing i have added as a dependency so let me you know uh, just comment out the existing example okay Hmm. This is not even getting saved. Just give me a minute. You can uh, test this across your own APIs that you have on the organization as well. Uh, not exactly sure why this is not happening. Resource type. so it should it will uh, it will uh, throw you the project errors here itself okay uh, like uh, whatever the existing rule set that we have currently here so that will showcase it automatically as soon as you make some changes here uh, not sure the system is very slow at the moment but yeah ideally what i wanted to showcase here is that if you are violating against any rule sets in your api in the design center itself if you want to validate this at the design time you can download this as an exchange module that will validate uh, that will validate this api immediately as soon as you uh, at the design time itself okay so yeah i think uh, that's it from my side over to you back over back to you uh, let the screen be as is deepak please because after the benefit okay. i'm going to pose the questions also so let the screen oh, yes. be as is yeah okay yeah your next next okay i think very well explained uh, demo uh, i think uh, anybody has any questions with respect to demo or you know any other questions so uh, do reach out to us now or emails or maybe linkedin anything so whatever we have discussed about um, api governance i would like to just summarize it about uh like while talking about the benefits uh the very first thing is consistency in api specs and the standards across the platform so we don't have to unnecessarily do anything the architects but yeah once it is set up uh it will be consistent throughout all the apis and as i showed you the any new api gets added that is automatically a part of uh, you know api governance profile provided it should match with the tags and all of it th those conditions are still there but it will be still automatically a part of uh, api governance so we just we don't have to do anything explicitly uh, high security assured by minimizing risk uh, high quality assured with any point best practices rules allows developer to ensure apis are in conformance at design time only ci cd compatible as deepak mentioned and uh, adds performance overhead but this could overcome by following design and development best practices so uh, can you go to the next slide these are some reference links uh, so the ppt uh, and the video both will be added to our uh, event page only 
Uh, next, Deepak. So I think yep. this is a quiz time. And uh, as I told you, there is still a time. If there is any question, you can ask in the Q&A uh, section to all of us. And then we'll try our best to answer that. So please have an eye on Q&A session. I'm going to post one question and then the options. I will read also that for you. And then probably you have to select uh, one answer. OK? So I hope everybody is ready. Deep, uh, I mean, uh, Sandeep, Sumit, can I go about it? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, so this is the first uh, question. Yeah, I think everybody's hands will be good. Notification will be only sent out when latest version of an API becomes non confirmant true or false. Are the answers coming, Sumin? Yeah, so better you put in the general oh. section, Supriya. The answers are coming in general. Okay, okay, it is coming in general section. Okay. So I think the right answer is uh, true. Uh, Ankit, it is quite confusing. <laughs> but, uh, Ankit, you meant true, right? Meant true, I think. Yes. Okay. So uh, Ank, uh, can you please provide your uh, email to Sumit? Or maybe you can put it in this window before we move to the second question. So upon uh, giving the email IDs of uh, whoever wins the quiz uh, is going to get the training uh, from MuleSoft. How and when is something MuleSoft will be given, but I'll be providing you with the links. OK, I got the link uh, email ID of Ankit. Uh, I mean, let's go ahead with the okay. second one. Yeah. Oh, fair, fair enough. This is a uh, second question, which I'm putting in a general section. Please, everybody have an eye on it. Which below is the right syntax for start of the YAML in the rule set file? Any point, uh, the profile, any point best practices? Percentage profile 1.0, uh, hash percentage YAML, hash. Uh, let me just see what is the answer. Hash percentage validation profile 1.0. Uh, Rohit said 3, 3, 3, 3. Everybody is said 3. So. Okay. Alisa is right. Alisa has said the fourth option. Alisa's uh, answer is right. So, guys, that was just for the confusion, but it never starts with YAML. That was uh, mine and Deepak's strategy. <laughs> so, uh, I think it was more on Deepak's idea, right? Deepak to put it YAML. So, it worked, I guess. Uh, but uh, yes. that fourth, fourth is the answer. Validation profile 1.0. That is how the YAML file starts. And then comes the profile name. Okay. So, Alisa, your answer is right. Could you please send your email ID? Alisa changed her uh, answer to three. Yeah, I think she again changed to four. Yeah, yeah Alisa only have given uh, four ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alisa also got confused in the beginning. <laughs> so, right syntax for the YAML file is just that one. But for the rule set, uh, uh -huh. it actually starts with the validation profile. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Alisa. Alisa has also given her email ID. Okay, this is the last question. Everyone, this is, most, this is the most confusing question. Just a small hint. Please read a question and then answer. Sure. That's fine. Even if you're a bit late, that should be fine. Okay, here is what happens when the version of default uh, slash custom rules have changed. It applied automatically on governance profile. Answer are yes, no, whatever. Sumuk has answer. Ankit has answer. What do you think, Deepak? Deepak, you were saying this is the most difficult. What is difficult in that? <laughs> you have provided a demo quite well, so people are not getting confused now. Yeah, it seems like everyone is looking at the screen very attentively. Yeah. The one who has answered two is the right one. You have to manually so, update Patil, the profiles. So, Muk Patil, if you could please send your email. Sorry, Gopal Pravin, three is not the right answer. The right answer is two. No user needs to manually update the profile. So, Sumu, please, could you please paste your... He's done it already. 
if i can request everybody to come on video just for a single picture and organizers and speaker pro, please don't leave yeah. let's start making a uh, host okay so let's begin uh, enable the video yes 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 i am trying that so with let me take a picture because i think for you my video is coming blur right yeah you also take i also take Hello, Praveen. Yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Praveen. Is everybody a presenter now? Yes, very. What is this noise? Deepak, your side, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think I think it's on Sophia Bhavan's no, no. side. I'm just alone here. I want the no, no. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Somuk is also host. Everybody who's not got the, I think everybody has got the access. I request everybody to come uh, just for one picture. Uh, Kalyani, I think Gopal, is on a, on a, on a, could you please show your beautiful on a very faces HD camera. to us? Could you please show your beautiful faces to us? <laughs> Hashtag beautiful. <laughs> leaving, don't leave for all. Don't leave for all, please, guys. Please. I've taken few pics. Uh, it's okay. You can also see. Hello, Alisa. Hello. I think the other uh, people are refused to show. Uh, Sumit, uh, could you please uh, look here in the screen? <laughs> yes, I've take. I've managed to take uh, one. Uh, so thank you guys again for joining. Uh, and uh, for Monday, Happy Independence Day to everybody. Uh, only I know how much I'm missing it. Uh, so Happy Independence Day and have a good, wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead. Thank you. Thanks, thank Deepak. You. Thanks. Thank it was lovely. Thank you. Your end. Thank you. Thank I think you. Deepak Sandeep thank and so you. many thank you guys so can much. stay. If you guys can stay, Sandeep, Deepak, and Sumit. Sure, sure. Let me take a picture of organizers and. Do it. Do any one of you have the tricolor flag? Oh, that would have been the great. Idea. <laughs> not here. Not here. Yeah, okay. Bye bye. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Bye, Praveen. Thanks for attending the session. Happy Independence Day. Okay. Thank you. You too. Just playing the music. Thank you very much. That was thank amazing. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, one second. I'm taking our picture. One second. Thank you. Just a second. I'm just trying to remove people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, just uh, four of us right now. Yeah, there's an extra member. Five. Yes, this looks fine too. Okay, thank you, guys. Sophia, thanks, Sundi. Thank you so much. Bye. Sure. Thank you, Supriya. Thank you, Sandeep. And bye good bye. to see Sandeep again. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, man. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye.